This man was attacked by a Sasquatch and managed to capture the moment on video. He just got out of the hospital and he wants this encounter shared ASAP. You're not going to want to miss this one, so grab a cup of coffee and enjoy this walk through Sasquatch territory. This may sound crazy as hell and hard to believe, but whether you believe it or not, I have a video for you to see for yourself that this actually happened and this isn't BS. I just got out of the hospital yesterday and you'll see why I ended up in the ER after you watch the video. So I was out taking a walk because the weather's been feeling pretty decent considering it's February. I was trying to enjoy it while I could just in case the winter cold decided to strike again. It turns out that I would have been better off staying inside. Now I'm stuck with stitches, a concussion, and a pounding headache that's been going on non-stop for days. I'm willing to serve as a prime example of what not to do when you're alone in the middle of the woods and you hear and see the classic signs of a Sasquatch. These creatures are no more threatening than a black bear. Unless you invade their privacy, then you could end up like me. If you think you're in the vicinity of a Sasquatch, I know it may be tempting to take out your phone and start recording to add to the vast amounts of evidence that's already out there. But let me tell you, it's not worth it. Don't try to be the hero. Phones and technological devices make these creatures mad as hell, and you're best off respecting their space, and they'll respect you. So I was walking through the most densely wooded part of my property when I started hearing some unusual noises about 50 to 70 feet out in front of me from the woods to my right. I couldn't see anything and I continued to walk closer to where it was coming from so I could see what all the commotion was about. Usually I wouldn't think too much about noises coming from the woods, but there was something off about them. It was these loud whack 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 sounds like someone was chopping down a tree. And that's what sort of got me concerned in the first place. I thought it might have been a trespasser on my property hacking at my trees and I wasn't going to tolerate that. So I was on my way to tell him off. But it turns out I was the one trespassing. When I got closer, I noticed the noises were coming from something with a lot more strength than a human. Not your typical lumberjack chopping down a tree. There was more volume to it. And it didn't sound like an axe hitting a tree. It sounded like a full-blown tree hitting a tree. I thought it might have been Sasquatch activity because I've heard the encounters and the ways people describe them and their behaviors. I knew about wood knocks. Plus, I knew these things were on my property, but nobody ever believed me when I'd tell them, so I was real excited that maybe I was going to get one on video. But I can tell you, these things aren't just going to mosey on out and pose for you while you snap a few pictures. They knew I was there the whole time and they were obviously watching me. Even though I knew I was being watched, I figured it wouldn't hurt to try and at least get some wood knocks on camera. Well, as soon as I took out my phone and started recording, as you can see, something was hurled at my head almost immediately after I pressed record. It knocked me out. I think it was a rock. Next thing I know, I'm in the hospital. Apparently, I was out there for way too long and my wife came looking for me. When she saw me unconscious with blood coming from my skull, she called an ambulance. A few hours after I woke up, everything started coming back to me. And then I remembered my phone. I knew I had potential Sasquatch video evidence on it, and that was the only thing going through my pounding stitched up head until I got it and watched the video back. You can see, just a few seconds in, something came flying out from the right of the screen. It got me right in the side of the head, and I was out just about the second it hit me. I didn't hear any of their vocalizations when it happened, because I was fast asleep like a baby. But the phone caught it loud and clear enough. You can hear they're vocalizing back and forth to each other for a little while, and then they must have gone on their way because there was just silence after that for about 30 minutes or so until my phone died. I cut that out so you don't have to sit through that. At first I wished I'd caught one of them on video and not just the rock that knocked me out, but in the end I'm just thankful that I'm alive. I'm not trying to tell anyone how to live their lives, but I'm just saying that when it comes to Sasquatch, 
and if anybody ever comes across one or even if they see or hear signs of them like I did, I just want to say, take caution. I mean extreme caution. I was never expecting that and I never would have. It all happened in a blink of an eye for me. When you're in the woods and you see a sign of Sasquatch, you get out of there immediately. I'm not joking. We got enough evidence out there already. We already have the Patterson-Gimlin film, so don't go trying to be a hero and get more evidence and end up in the hospital like my dumbass. When I got back, the doc said I needed some rest, so I've been off work for a while, and I've had a lot of time to research these beings. It really fired up my interest in Sasquatch, and I binge-watched all your videos, and as bad as it is, my encounter could have ended up a lot worse, and I'm thankful that I made it out of there alive. Want to talk on the phone sometime? Here's my number if you have any more questions to ask. I have a lot more to say that would take too long to type here. Thank you for everything you do. Give me a ring. I'd be happy to do an interview with you sometime. Ask for Dan. Is this Dan? Yeah, it's Dan. Well, first things first, how's your head doing, man? Well, my head's doing all right. I'm hanging in there. It's been tough the past several days, but it's getting better. You know, when I heard the impact of that rock in the video, I was like, man, is he dead? I don't know how you survived that, man. Yeah. So a lot of eyewitnesses describe a feeling of dread or feel like someone's watching them before their encounter. Did you experience anything like that leading up to your encounter? Well, I wouldn't say dread, but I felt real nervous all of a sudden. You can see my hands were shaking in the video. Funny thing is, I'm never like that. I've been an outdoorsman my whole life. That should have been a pretty clear sign to get the hell out of there. Guess my thick skull didn't get the point. Well, it's a good thing it was thick enough to survive that rock, though, right? <laughs> yeah, I guess you're right, man. So a lot of people are going to be wondering, did you see anything before you were knocked out? You know, any movement, any shadows? Well, I don't like to say anything I can't confirm, but since you're asking me, yeah, I thought I saw something move out of the corner of my eye a few minutes before I started recording. But it was way too fast to say what it was. Main thing is, I was somewhere I shouldn't have been. How tall would you say it was? At least six feet, no more than ten. Did it look bipedal? Well, like I said, it was pretty much just a blur, and I guess I was more focused on those wood knocks. Have you ever had anything like this happen on your property before? Well, I knew Bigfoots were in the area, but I never had one target me like that before. They'll usually just leave you alone if you leave them alone. They don't want no trouble. You just gotta not do anything to piss them off. Kinda like a grizzly. In your email, you seem pretty passionate that it's not a good idea to try and record these things. Yep. So would you say that pulling out your phone is what provoked the attack? Without a doubt, absolutely 100% yes. Now listen, there's enough evidence for these things out there already. Don't be an idiot like me, thinking you're gonna be the one to convince the world Sasquatch exists. People won't believe until they have a body. And good luck in the body. You know, that's much easier said than done. So what made you want to stick around and film them when you knew they were in the area? I think most people would have gotten the hell out of there immediately. Ha <laughs> ha. Well, it's kind of stupid. Something I didn't mention in the email is I have a buddy. And he is not a believer. No matter how many times I tell him Sasquatch are real, he doesn't believe. And a couple of years ago, he bet me a thousand bucks that I couldn't get one on video. And he said he'd even buy me three beers for a year if I could show him. So I was hoping to prove him wrong, I guess. Didn't really work out, though. Do you think he'll believe after watching the video? He's one of those people that won't believe unless they get a body. So I'd have to say, no, you won't believe. So when your wife went to go looking for you and she found you unconscious, did she see any signs that there were Sasquatch in the area? Well, let me ask her. One second. Martha, Smokey's on the phone. We got a question for you. Hi, Smokey. Oh, hi, Martha. I was just about to ask your husband, when you went out and you found him lying unconscious, I'm sure you were scared to death, but did you see or hear any Sasquatch activity while you were out there? Well, I was utterly panicked. Dan's never out after dark, and I look at the clock. It's six, seven, eight o'clock, and I'm thinking, oh my God, what happened to him? So I went out there with a flashlight, and then, <sighs> my baby's lying on the ground with blood coming out of his skull. I was so scared. So scared. Um, but yes, I noticed on the way out there were a bunch of trees torn out of the ground and thrown around everywhere, but everything else was a blur. The trees were torn out of the ground? Yes, they had the roots on them and everything. And how big were they? Uh, mostly medium-sized white pines. 
So next thing you know, we were in the ER, and oh my god, it was a nightmare. A real nightmare. I'm so sorry, Smokey. The dinner's about to scorch. I have to go check on that. Say hi to Buck for me. Thank you so much, Martha. No problem, honey. Okay, Dan, I don't want to keep you much longer, but what's your opinion on Sasquatch now that you've had this experience? Are they good or evil? Well, even after what happened, I have to say they're just like us humans. Some good, some evil. I don't believe the ones I encountered were evil. I think they were just trying to protect themselves. You know, technology is their biggest threat. Anything else you'd like to tell the viewers? Treat these creatures with respect, just like you would any other animal, and you'll be fine. Don't try to prove anything to anybody. And if you have an encounter with one of these things, some people will believe you and some won't. It's just the way it is. Well said, Dan. Thank you so much. We appreciate having you on the show. Thanks so much, Smokey. A lot of folks have been sharing their encounters in the comment section, and I always want to give you guys a voice, so here are just a few of these amazing encounters. First one was sent in by a woman who has had three encounters with the Yowie, which is Australia's Sasquatch. Here's what she says. The first one I saw in the Blue Mountains while riding my horse in 1974. The next one I saw was in Northern NSW in 1992. The third one I saw was in Queensland in 2000 in what is called Yowie Country. They even have a Yowie statue in the town park. I was probably about 30 kilometers from the town camping by the dam with my 11 year old daughter and two horses. That was the closest. It came down from the mountain behind us and walked past the cattle yards we had our horses in. My daughter was asleep in her swag next to the yards. The horses got spooked and were trying to get behind each other until they were in the corner next to our swags. I got up to calm them down and see what was scaring them. And then I saw a big head and shoulders walking along the opposite rails. It stopped at the end and stared at me as I stepped over my sleeping daughter to have her behind me. In those few seconds I considered our options. We had been dropped off that morning by horse float and we were at least 15 kilometers from the nearest house. We had horses, unsaddled and scared, and a sleeping 11 year old. There were no options of escape, so I said quietly, we mean no harm, it's just my daughter and I, please leave us alone. It just continued to look at me, look at my daughter, and then I got a feeling that we were safe in my head. No words, but I wasn't scared at all. With that, it walked off into the trees and disappeared into the night. Surprisingly, I then went straight to my swag after checking the horses and slept soundly until the sun came up. I couldn't see any footprints as there was lots of grass cover. I told my daughter when she woke up and she just said, cool. We went back the next weekend with our friend and climbed the mountain. At the top, we found a cave full of bats and a nest made on the edge overlooking the dam and obviously us. It had a few possum bones scattered around. It was a great lookout over the dam where lots of people fish. We were the only two humans there. The last fisherman left around dusk. I now live in South Australia, but I don't think they are around where I live. Every time I go back to Queensland, I try to make it out to the dam and leave a few treats where I think they'll be found and I call up the mountain to say hi. We don't have guns in Australia, and there really aren't any predators we need to worry about. I don't know why I've been lucky enough to see three of them, but I'm glad I did. When I saw the first one as a kid, we had seen the Patterson-Gimlin Sasquatch, but I really didn't think they would be in Australia, so I didn't know what I was seeing. There was another sighting about 10 years later, not as far as the crow flies from where I saw it. You know, I tell you, some people are just magnets to these things. I'm glad all of your encounters were peaceful. This next encounter was sent in by a viewer who encountered a mischievous entity of some sort while hunting for agates. Do you think it was a Sasquatch or something else? Here's the encounter. Love the story and your channel. I've never shared this story with anyone except the person I was with the day it happened. I was picking at the pretty agates and rocks in a dry seasonal creek bed in the forest in Oregon. The friend I was with went walking into the trees looking around, and we were just out enjoying the beautiful day, when a dark shadow being, very tall, not walking but floating, came up to me from the left quite quickly trying to scare me, and I telepathed to it, oh you scared me, and then I just went back to looking at the rocks. A few minutes went by and the shadow being did it again, and I telepathed to it, you didn't scare me that time, I could feel your approach this time. Its vibe was that of a child trying to be a little stinker. 
It did that to me two more times trying to scare me and I was smiling saying, you didn't scare me that time, you're gonna have to try harder. Just messing with it, being playful and keeping it light. I could feel it get pissed because trying to scare me didn't work and finally it just huffed off and disappeared. We appreciate you sharing that. The next one takes us to Washington State and it is terrifying. Myself and three friends of mine had a terrifying experience in the woods in Washington State. I believe it was a Sasquatch, but during the experience I continually felt that there was something supernatural or demonic about it. It was very strange. The creature charged at us towards the trail, smashing through everything except larger trees. I didn't know what I could do except pray, and that's exactly what I did, and whatever it was charging us suddenly stopped cold and we kept running all the way back to the truck and burned rubber the second the engine started. I strongly believe that Sasquatch exists and there is a supernatural component to it. I don't know, maybe demonic, but I never go into the woods alone anymore. And when I do go into the woods with friends or whatever, I always bring some serious firepower. I can't blame you for staying out of the woods after that. That's absolutely insane. And lastly, the fun fact of the day. It turns out Bigfoots love cherry pie, raw potatoes and eggs. You learn something new every day. Folks, we appreciate everything you do. Thanks for watching. Stay safe and God bless.